Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs. Hello, my name is Sandra Grasse and I'm a licensed acupuncturist. Welcome to a very, very special edition of our video blog posts. As you can see, I'm so, so excited about this because Siobhan and I are thrilled to bring to you a very, very special person. The person that gave us that initial push to get in this path of acupuncture for fertility, pregnancy, childbirth. This woman is still so so important to us and um, she's a great friend it's almost 10 years now since we got that uh, since we got to meet the first time and got that push to to go along this path and i what else can i say about this person our teacher our mentor our, our great great friend and the author of the super amazing the fertile fizz so we're going to have a chat with Johnny White and I am so, so looking forward to this. Um, so Johnny's waiting on the other side. So I'm just going to go into a split screen and we'll talk about the book. And there's a few other questions and a few other topics that I want to talk to her. So I hope you guys enjoy it and let's go to split screen. So here we are in split screen now with the amazing Johnny White, author of The Fertile Fizz. And Johnny, thank you so, so much for being here and just your own passionate words, what made you write this book? What made you put this amazing information together? Well, thank you for having me, Sandra. I'm really, really happy to spend my Sunday morning hanging out with you. <laughs> um, yeah, and the joys of technology. Um, why did I write The Fertile Fizz? I um, was really encouraged to write this book because as I was becoming more and more involved in my fertility practice, and as my practice was really evolving from mostly treating women to really embracing and starting to treat men, I started to really understand the huge impact that not conceiving is having on a couple's relationship. And I think that The First Half Fizz is a really interesting little book. It slides into the genre of all the books that are on the shelf out there to help you get pregnant. And I believe that it offers a little bit of a space between that isn't really talked about in a lot of the books. And uh, it's fundamentally uh, the, the, the real core of the book is to help people to realize and understand that the chemistry of attraction is the chemistry of conception. Mm -hmm. So the big message in the book is that when people are trying to conceive and it gets very intense, it's like, I need this sperm to meet with this egg and we need to make a embryo and that embryo has to implant and I need to get pregnant. And, and I'm kind of not exaggerating. The, the, the ferociousness of what couples are going through when month after month the conception isn't happening, it, it can really eat them alive and it can really massively impose into their intimacy. Mm. And so what the book is about, you know, our, our subtitle for it is that it's, it's a very sexy biology lesson. Mm. Yeah. And um, what, we, what we're doing in the, in the book is to really try and help people to understand better how their biochemistry works and to really understand the chemistry of conception, which is the chemistry of attraction, and then looking at the chemistry of stress mm -hmm. and the chemistry of digestion and how intrinsically stress affects our digestive hormones and the digestive hormones affect the reproductive hormones. And it teaches people to really recognize and understand the cascades of how their hormones work. And so why did I write this book? Because when people say, oh, just stop thinking about it. Oh, oh, you're just too stressed. You need to not be stressed. And I don't think that's good enough. I think people need to be able to understand how their stress affects their body and to really understand why it's so important to address that and change those stress mechanisms. So that's really what the book is about. And, and I'm, sure, I'm sure you've had this comment brought to you by, by your patients as well, but from our own patients here, what we're getting as a feedback from the book is that, wow, we can actually, we can read the book together. It's not 
do this if you're a woman trying to conceive, do that if yeah. you're a man trying to conceive. They can actually sit down and it's a book for the two of them. It's absolutely it's for them to and we can even go and it's a book for them to have fun. Oh enjoy well, okay, so so you haven't mentioned in this particular vlog that the book is seeded with beautiful erotic images and very, very sexy erotic poetry. And uh, without question, you know, so many of the books about getting pregnant are, are a kind of a how-to manual of what to do. And um, the, the Fizz is a really interesting book. It's, it's very dense with information um, because it, it's written to a whole spectrum of issues. And, you know, I want for each couple who are picking up this book to be able to find the, the bits that are actually really relevant to them because the way that it, we constructed it is so that they can patchwork and, and draw some uh, some information and advice that's really relevant to their own particular situation mm -hmm. and it very much it, it never actually says okay to get pregnant you need to do x or to get pregnant you need to do y but what it does do is consistently all the way through the book help people to realize what they can do mm -hmm. to increase and maximize their own fer fertile capacities. How do I make myself more fertile? That's, that's really what it's about. And again, going back to that principle that always, always involve both and as part of the couple, because you do need that connection. You do need that, that chemistry between the two of them. And a lot of the times it's just the problem is with you. The problem is with you work together as a couple work together and be together enjoy it enjoy it while you're trying well yeah which is easy to say but you know after month after month after month after month and i think one of the things that i really like about the fertile fizz is that it it goes right to the core of the really difficult difficult aspects and one of the things that very seldom ever gets mentioned in any of the fertility books is the massive issues around guilt and blame. And, you know, I think this is a, a really important place for people who are trying to conceive to, to find the bravery to be able to step into helping each other to examine what's actually going on. And this is probably as vulnerable a place is, is possible to go in the scary, scary gamut of all of the difficult emotions of trying to conceive. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of the people who are watching this are watching it because they're struggling to conceive. And it's extremely difficult to express to people outside of that sphere what it's actually like. If you've never actually had to be in these emotions, it's it's almost impossible to imagine but you know 40 percent of uh, fertility issues are now male factor mm. and, and one of the really big issues that isn't getting tabled is very much around the fact that she may very often feel a sense of anger about the fact that he is the reason that they're not getting pregnant but that anger is immediately sublimated by a massive sense of guilt for even feeling those emotions and at the same time he's feeling a sense of guilt that it's his fault that they're not able to get pregnant mm -hmm. and, and and the the, the the dynamic of what can happen for a couple in that is, is often a, a, a wind up into a space and place where the fear of the vulnerability actually causes this very closed tension between them. And, you know, you asked me at the start of this, why did I write this book? Well, I wrote this because I really feel that it's important to help people find a way to just go, oh, mm. This is shit. Yeah. Am I allowed to say bad words? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> you know, it's, it's just not a very, very good place. And so, you know, Fizz is my shorthand for understanding the endocrine system and really teaching people to understand that 
our thoughts and our feelings have a very profound effect on our hormonal signaling in the body. Mm. And that actually preparing for pregnancy, whether that's to fall pregnant naturally or to prepare for assisted conception, one of the most important things to be able to take care of is that ability to stay in a very calm and centered space where you, you're feeling very connected as a couple. So, Johnny, you work in a Western fertility clinic. So how, how does that work in the sense of having what they do and what you do? How do you combine that together? Oh, that's uh, something I'm always really happy to talk about. Um, I practice integrative medicine. So my discipline is Chinese medicine. And Chinese medicine is, I would always classify to people to understand a whole systems medicine. This is not a complementary therapy by any means. Mm. So Chinese medicine in itself is, um, is a very complete system of medicine. And I'm very fortunate in my work to be based right in the heart of a Western fertility unit. And prior to that, I spent 10 years working in a uh, Western obstetric clinic. So um, I very much want to be in a platform where I'm working in conjunction with the Western docs. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to quote my American friends, they always say the docs. Um, so our, um, the, the advantages are, are immense. And um, of course, within a, a Western, uh, in this case, fertility unit, uh, we have access to blood assays so we can do any blood panels that we need as and when we need them. And uh, of course, the scanning facility, um, all of the aspects of testing that might need to go on. So checking to make sure the tubes are clear, a high cozy or a hysterosalpingogram, uh, doing follicle tracking, you know, all, all of the aspects of the Western diagnostic tools are a wonderful adjunct to what I'm doing. And I feel that the work that I'm doing is a tremendous adjunct to what my Western docs are doing. They're guiding patients through the investigative process and potentially through the assisted process. And so they're able to take them step by step through that Western treatment. And with having their acupuncture, potentially Chinese herbs, alongside of that, I always like to um, help people to understand that what we really bring to the table is a combined aspect of diagnosis that really doubles your ability to do as much as you can do to conceive. Mm. You know, Chinese medicine is a very, very rich, rich medicine. And in, in Chinese medicine, food is the first medicine. Yeah. And so one of the great advantages of a Chinese medicine diagnosis is the ability to then immediately understand uh, A, the kinds of foods, but B, the kinds of food preparation that are best going to benefit this person and also the things that they really need to avoid. Mm -hmm. uh, so too with all our lifestyle advice, this is a huge and important part of Chinese medicine. And so ensuring that people uh, maybe are not doing hot yoga because it may be that actually uh, their fluid deplete that that actually the hot yoga is depleting them further lots of people over exercise lots of people are not getting enough rest mm -hmm. and and rest is a kind of the nourishment and so i'm i'm very enthusiastic about how much our chinese diagnosis has to bring to the table just in respect of the diet and lifestyle recommendations. Uh, I'm hugely enthusiastic about what acupuncture does in respect of really helping people to be able to relax. Mm. Acupuncture actually really changes your stress mechanisms. Mm. Uh, acupuncture is absolutely genius for changing your your hormonal profile when you're when you're driving on your stress hormones we are very very excellent at helping to use the acupuncture to switch down those stress mechanisms so without going into all of the the kind of biochemistry of it 
I'm sure that many of you who are scoping the internet these days are recognizing and hearing people talking about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Yes. So sympathetic is your fight or flight response. This is when you are adrenalized. And parasympathetic is your rest and digest. And essentially, one of the most important things for you to be able to conceive is you need to be switched into parasympathetic. You need to be in that rest and digest mode for your reproductive hormone cycles to be able to work. And I think this is one of the most important things that acupuncture can bring to your care program as you're trying to conceive. Mm -hmm. It's really going to help to switch down those stress hormones, which of course in turn is really going to help to amplify and improve what your digestive hormone complexes are doing. Mm -hmm. And what lots of people don't realize is that your sexual and reproductive hormones are predicated on your digestive balance mm. so so one of the great things about chinese medicine is you as you come into a process of having a course of chinese medicine treatment of course we're fundamentally very concerned about treating your fertility but actually do you know treating to improve menstrual cycles and treating to improve sperm parameters that's relatively straightforward and easy mm. but the the biggest advantage that you're going to gain from coming for a course of acupuncture is we're going to streamline things from top to bottom to help to make sure that you're not switching into that, that sympathetic adrenalized state that we're going to keep you in a nice parasympathetic frame, massively improving your digestive and reproductive hormone complexes. Because what I always like to say is, you know what? We don't get, pregnant with just our gynae. It's not just about the sperms and the eggs. We actually get pregnant with our whole body. And pregnancy, fundamentally, is the digestive process. So we need to make sure that your digestion is in top notch. That's, that's a really, really important factor. So that was a very long-winded answer to say that I think that adding Chinese medicine into your Western treatment is always going to be a wonderful way to really be able to amplify your body's ability to conceive. And, and that's, that, that's generally what we get as, as a feedback, even here in Ireland, because you're in London, we're, we're here in, in, in Dublin with DM, which well, that's pretty much the feedback that we get from the consultants in the clinics or even the gynecologists in terms of just for the couples watching this, it's it's going to help them. They're going to get to their to that treatment in a better place than they would if they weren't getting any treatment. So they're going to get advice. And it's not just again about what you're saying. It's not just the hormones. Not just the cycle. It's not just the sperm. Overall, they're going to get to that treatment in a much better state. So we, we are getting that feedback here, and we can understand why the consultants would want the couples to go through that. So I just want you to, to talk to the, about this for a little while again for couples that, that think about going to a fertility clinic and then you get acupuncture. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's only when you're going in for fertility treatment that you get acupuncture. You can be trying naturally and already being optimizing your body. I'm, I'm sure that you see patients that are just trying naturally as well. They don't have to be going to a clinic. Absolutely. Um, so you know, my favorite thing is, is when a couple comes and approaches me and says, oh, you know, we, we'd really like to conceive. We want to prepare for a good conception and a good pregnancy. That's absolutely my favorite kind of patient. Unfortunately, few and far between because most people are finally coming for treatment when things haven't been working or there's been repeated failed IVFs. So, you know, it's really fair to say that a lot of the patients who do knock on my door, you know, it's kind of like, well, I've tried everything else. It's now, time, now it's time to try acupuncture. And um, I think that we really want to help to amplify the, the voice and the message to really put out to people to understand that this is a wonderful way to help to prepare your body, no matter what stage you are, no matter where you are in your fertility journey. And so coming back to the integrative medicine, because I know this vlog is going out internationally, 
um, and I want people to understand that within our profession as Chinese medicine practitioners, we are working really hard and we have an extremely high standard within our own profession of postgraduate study for practitioners who are doing fertility support work. So here in the UK, we have the Acupuncture Fertility Network, the AFN, and our colleagues in the States and Canada have what's called the ABORM, the American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine. Now, for a practitioner to become board certified, it means that they have to do a very considerable amount of postgraduate education and then sit board exams mm. in order to receive that title of ABORM. And I really want to help people to understand that when you are looking for a Chinese medicine uh, practitioner, it's, it's terribly important that you do ask them about their credentials and about their training. And I really want to help to amplify this message that in terms of supporting assisted conception, sometimes our Western docs are a little bit nervous or concerned about what it is that we're doing and that somehow we're going to interfere with what they're doing. And we're working really hard as a profession to help to educate our Western colleagues and to help people to understand from the general public perspective, that everything that we're doing in supporting assisted conception in particular, we all have a very significant level of training mm. to understand the safe and appropriate way to do this. But to come back to your question, you know, far and away, the best thing you can ever do is have a course of treatment before you go into assisted conception. But any of us are very adept and very well trained at receiving you at whatever point you are within your journey. Know that acupuncture in particular is always going to help you. Chinese herbs are something that you really need to do as a three to four month program prior to heading into uh, any kind of assisted work. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad that you mentioned the training and the certification because it's something that I've mentioned before in other vlogs and I can't say it enough. And it was you actually that, that and I mentioned this before in the introduction, it was you that kind of put us in this path of, of acupuncture for fertility. And from day one, you mentioned how important it is. Keep on doing the training. Don't worry about the now. Just keep on doing the training and you will get there. And I've mentioned this before. For people watching the vlog, if you want to get more information, always, always make sure that you're going to a practitioner who is qualified. Just go, not just an acupuncturist point of view, but actually from the, uh, the, the knowing about gynecology, fertility treatment. It's so, so important. I've mentioned the, the Acupuncture Fertility Network before, and I'm definitely going to try to get someone from the ABRM on the, on the vlog as well. So I'm working definitely. on that at the moment. That would be it. That, that's really yeah. good news because it's we have a really exciting international network in our profession and and our, our fertility community internationally we're very keyed in with each other we're always in communication the standard of the the lectures that are available to us most of us do our training uh through online seminars so um, you know, we travel when we can, but if we do have access to all of the best teachers internationally in the comfort of our own sitting room, curled up in our pajamas on the couch under the favorite duvet with a cup of tea. Yeah, I, I do a lot of my training sitting on the couch. Um, but that means that I actually have the very uh, distinct privilege of being able to listen to all the top flight voices within my profession. Mm -hmm. And I can't encourage people enough to really make sure, you know, when you've, you've, you've all heard it. This is why you're watching this vlog. You've heard acupuncture is good for fertility and you thought, okay, I'm going to key in and listen to what these people have to say. And uh, as, as fertility practitioners, and it's certainly been um, the, the drum that I've been banging throughout the whole of my 20-year career, is that it's very important that you seek out and find a practitioner who has done good postgraduate studies. So don't hesitate to ask somebody mm. about what their qualifications are. Sometimes location is an issue. And there may be somebody who's, who's only uh, in your area who, who hasn't done that, that scope or level of training, but 
that's not to say that they don't have a great deal to offer you. And uh, be assured that every practitioner who is a qualified licensed acupuncturist is stepping into a practice where they are seeing fertility patients. Yeah. And so fertility postgrad is going to be on their agenda. Mm, yeah, and, and the standard is high enough. And again, you've mentioned the community and the fact that the network is so tight that that practitioner can easily get in contact with someone to help out and look at the case history. And they will, they will be able to network in that way to help the patient as well. So yeah, no, no. I, I have... I have a lovely system. So when people ask me for uh, some support advice, I, I book a time with them. And then while I'm out walking the dogs, I have my earphones in and, and I'm able to very happily support my colleagues through their questions whilst I'm outside enjoying my dog walk. Yes, absolutely. Wow, that was just phenomenal. That was that was part one of the amount of information that we have with with Jani. I, I can't thank her enough, and I'm so privileged that now I can finally show to everyone the, uh, the someone that is so so dear to to Siobhan and I, and a great friend. And I really really hope that you enjoy the um, the information that Jani has been providing to us. I'll break it down into different vlogs. So watch this space. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button because that way you will get the uh, the information that there's more material up and you can watch it straight away. Um, Jani also asked me to just leave a link up here to for you to go and check her YouTube channel. She's putting tons of information there. Just please go and have a look. It, it, it's great, great advice there. So just please go and check that out. And Hey, until next time, be kind and be healthy. Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs.